Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest to talk about, as you can guess, tomatoes! They're finally here. we got a lot of different varieties right now, probably about 50 varieties or so. So I'm going to take the time to go through a few of our more popular varieties and the ones that we seem to be able to get on a fairly regular basis. Now just because I showed these or featured these doesn't mean that they're always going to be in stock. So while you're paying attention and listening and taking notes, choose more than one variety that, that you might be interested in. But anyways, this is just now new in the season pretty much and we're going to be carrying these tomatoes probably for the next month or so. Um, and then later on we'll start carrying some of the fall tomatoes or winter tomatoes. So these ones right now are our summer tomatoes and um, we have heirloom varieties and the, hair, uh, the hybrid varieties and then we have just the old tried and true regular varieties that have been around for many years that, that we can get very, really easily. So they're, they're pretty common for us to have them every week. So we'll talk about, first of all, one of my favorite ones and that is the little ones, the little cherries, the grape tomatoes, the juliettes. So um, we have a few hybrid varieties that are really cool. This one is called Isis. And this one is yellow with red splotches. So it looks very interesting when you're eating it. Um, but it's very sweet. It's a one and a half inch, <laughs> one and a half inch fruit. And um, these are all, these, the, the, the small tomatoes are all indeterminate, meaning that they're going to give you tomatoes throughout the season. Determinate tomatoes give you give you just one crop pretty much. So one way that I like to remember that is indeterminate means that you're going to get it throughout the year. Determinate means that they are determined to give you everything all at once. So if you can remember that, determinate tomatoes are going to give you everything all at once generally after they've given you a crop they're either they're pretty much done and die or they just might be green and not do anything so those are like your your juicing or your sauce tomatoes where you're going to want a lot of tomatoes all at once and you can get around that by staggering them so you could plant one one week and then a couple weeks later if you're a big sauce person or salsa person then you can plant another one two weeks later so that you're kind of staggering your harvest time so the next one I'm going to hit is Sweet Million, and that, oh, that just sounds like such an awesome thing. Millions of tomatoes. And these are, again, an inch to two inches. They are red, and they come in clusters, long clusters. And this particular one has a habit of ripening early. So you'll get some flowers right away, and it'll start flowering. Most of your bigger tomatoes take anywhere from two to three months to get a fruit that you're actually picking and eating. The smaller varieties take a lot less time. So they might, you might have some tomatoes in, the, in about a month after you've planted them, depending upon which variety. Now the other one, which is, all, which is mostly my all-time favorite, and that's the Sun Gold. And Sun Gold has a yellow fruit, very sweet. Um, and it produces throughout the year. I have my son, and they get, these guys get big. All of these tomatoes get really big. So they're gonna grow about vine, six, seven feet tall. So you need to have something to support those. Or if they're laying on the ground, you need to be able to get the tomatoes up off the ground. If the tomatoes sit on the ground, they're gonna get eaten or they're gonna rot. So make sure that you've got some kind of support for these tomatoes. My sun gold gets easily eight feet tall and it produces all season long, even into the winter time. Now I'm not getting as many tomatoes in the winter time, but I'm still going out there picking a handful or two of fresh tomatoes and they're so sweet because it's the off season, they're not stressed out um, until it rains and then they get kind of spotty. But other than that, those sun golds are awesome. They do split a little bit. The fruits do split if they're really ripe. There's been a few times I've picked them and washed them and then they split, but that just gives me a reason to go ahead and eat them right away. I eat those like popcorn. I love them. They're so delicious. The other one I'm going to talk about is a Juliet. Those are very common. You see them a lot in the grocery stores. Um, somewhere around here I have a Juliet. Oh, there it is. This is a Juliet, and those are the oblong ones. And they're also considered to be in the grape family, the grape uh, tomato family. So these are both oblong. Um, the grape tomato we have. We also have the Juliet hybrid. Um, the, uh, they call the uh, Juliet a mini Roma because it's 
shaped like a Roma tomato. The uh, grape tomato is not quite as long and it has a little bit thicker skin and it's supposed to be a little bit meatier than a cherry tomato. Cherry tomatoes are more round and they're a little bit thinner skin like the sun gold thinner skin so they have a tendency to, to crack a little bit easier whereas the, the grape tomatoes are, are a little more crack resistant which is kind of nice so they don't split on you. Then we have one of my next favorite one. This one is called Black Cherry. And it has like a mahogany, they described it as a mahogany purple. I like that, that description because that pretty much describes what it looks like. It's a fairly decent size, about an inch and a half tomato. It also is very juicy and, um, and it has a real rich flavor. It's, it's a really good flavor and it's meaty inside. So that's a nice one as well. These are all your little minis ones. So then we're gonna go to a dwarf variety. This one is called Husky Red. And this one gets a six ounce fruit, which is about so. And um, again, these are this is a split resistant as well, doesn't split as much. And they also have a Valencia. Valencia is a eight to 10 ounce, and we've got some sirens going on right now sorry about that these are 8 to 10 and they're orange like a Valencia orange and so I noticed that when they're not red a lot of the orange and the yellow varieties are less acid and they're a little bit easier on your stomach if you have an issue with acid and tomatoes so this one here gets like I said an 8 to 10 ounce fruit about so and again split resistant same with the Jubilee. This one is a six to seven ounce and it's a meaty, it's a kind of a little young guy and it's a meaty. And this one is a golden yellow, so or orange. So it's kind of in that same realm of um, less acid. And this one is also going to be a little bit smaller plant. So these varieties, this variety, the Husky Red and the Jubilee are a little bit more compact plants. So if you don't have as much space, you can use those. Now also we carry some of the varieties that do well in colder places. So that means that they have a tendency to give you fruit a little faster than some of the other ones. And the ones I'm talking about right now, these are all heirlooms and, and or hybrids. Now heirlooms are the varieties that our great grandmother, great granddad, great whoever's, great great greats were planting way back in the day. And they've survived and, and they still do all these wonderful things. Um, and then you have the other varieties that have been hybridized to be like more disease resistant. So um, that's kind of the difference between an heirloom and a non-heirloom. So we have uh, Stupus. That's this one here. Stupus. It's a three to six ounce tomato, and it's um, like I said, cold tolerant. Which and it's a it's about a two inch. Um, uh, fruit and it comes from the Czech Republic so it's kind of cold there so these work well now this is also a variety that we'll ca we're carrying in the fall for, as a winter tomato now winter tape when I say winter tomato doesn't mean you're going to get tons of, of tomatoes in the winter time usually what happens is the plant grows you get a few little tomatoes on them during then but but then when it comes back around again you've already got a fairly mature plant that's just ready to go and give you fruits right away. So even though they grow in the winter, you're still harvesting your fruits probably around March, April. So unless there's a few, if it were warm, which you never know, we can always be warm in the winter time. Sometimes we'll go ahead and get fruits. This one is called Jet Setter. And this one is an eight ounce fruit. So it's gonna be about so. And it is all, and it's uh, disease resistant. So this is a good one if you're having issues with diseases. Now I had somebody ask me what happens if I can't, I have a small yard and I can't rotate the crops. Because you should be rotating. You don't want to keep planting a tomato in the same spot, especially if you're doing it in the ground. And really there's no way to get around that other than maybe one year putting your tomato in a container and putting it somewhere else and then growing something else in that spot for a season and then come back to it to the following season so you can kind of alternate or maybe if you got two spots in your yard maybe one yard one side could be a tomato and and you know just swap them back and forth but either way 
You can do a few things like removing some soil or putting some mulch down, but generally for tomatoes, because they are really susceptible to diseases, a lot of them, um, we get books about this thick that are nothing but diseases for tomatoes. Um, as long as you are giving them what they need, a good air circulation, full sun, at least five hours of full sun, they're going to be less susceptible to these diseases. And if you see, keep seeming to have the same issues every year with your tomato, say you're getting tomato blight every year, then you need to pick a variety that is resistant to tomato blight. So that might be an option for you as well. Okay, jet setter, we were talking about jet setter. Okay, disease resistant, very good. And this is a red, red tomato. And then we also have Oregon Spring. Now, Oregon Spring was developed in Oregon. Mm -hmm. This one is an eight ounce, and this produces, uh, it's a quick producer, it's cold tolerant. Again, these are the cold tolerant ones. And this one is determinant. So this one is going to be determined to give you everything all at once. So I guess if you're gonna want a lot of tomatoes for salsas and things like that, this could be one of your options. And it also, you could plant it early in the season because it's cold resistant, a lot of times we carry it, or you have it in the fall, and then when it comes around next season, it's gonna be um, already doing something for you. So that's an option for you. Okay, so now the next ones we're gonna talk about are the big boys. And let's see, where do I have those? Those are right here in front of me. Okay, so we're gonna start off with pineapple. Now the pineapple, this particular one, is a, can be a two pound fruit. So we're talking big. And this one, let's see, where's my notes here? Is red, is red and it's very, or I'm sorry, it's kind of a blotchy uh, yellow with red splotches on it. Now I grew one last year and it ended up being more yellow than red, but it did have some red in it at, at the beginning. And I think it's just because I don't really have a lot of sun where I'm growing them. So it, I think if it were having way more sun, it would have been a little more splotchy. And it was very sweet, almost too sweet for me, believe it or not, because I like the sweet stuff. Um, I like to have a little twang in my tomatoes and this pineapple one did not have the twang that I was looking for, but it was very sweet. So. If you want the sweet and it low in acid again, this would be a good one and it gets a big fruit. Now I do notice though on these bigger ones, they don't seem to produce as many. So the bigger your fruit, the less fruit you're gonna have because that, that plant has gotta put a lot of energy into making that two pound fruit. And if you want a two pound fruit, you may have to thin off some of the other tomatoes so it'll put all that energy into growing that big fruit. Say you wanted to put something in at the Orange County Fair, you know, that might be an option for you. But the pineapple is very sweet. Um, we have Mortgage Lifter, this is an oldie. Um, mortgage Lifter came, it's disease resistant. This one is an improved Radiator Charlie and this came from West Virginia. So it was developed then. This can get a one to two pound fruit as well, and this is a red one. So they're a uh, nice big red traditional tomato. So then we have the old, oh yeah, old German. Now this is one of my favorite ones. I have planted this one before. It's yellow with red splotches, and it gets a nice big fruit. It's got, it's sweet, but it has that little bit of twang in there. It tastes like a tomato. And when you cut it, I don't know, it's kind of strange, but it looks like bloody cheese. I don't know if you want to, that's maybe not a good description, but it looks interesting on your, on your sandwich or your, on, on your um, hamburger. But anyways, it's a really good sweet one. Um, like I said, it, 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 one to two pound fruit on that guy. And then we have Omar's Lebanese. This one can give you, even though it's a little guy, he's going to grow and he will give you a one to three pound fruit. If you can get, get him to give you one, it could get up to three pounds. So, and these are very meaty. So this is a nice meaty one that you can um, put on sandwiches, in your salads, whatever. Um, German Johnson. German Johnson gives us a one, uh, a one and a half pound fruit. And this is also a nice, uh, this is a nice red one. So that gets fairly big as well. And then we have, let's see, great white. And this is actually a creamy white 
um, tomato. And this one can get 14 to 16 ounces, so a little bit less than a pound. And this one has a mild flavor, again, because it's not that red tomato, so it's got some sweetness to it. And it, they're saying, I haven't eaten one, but I'm sure tempted, that is a combination flavor between a pineapple, a melon, and a guava. So it makes me want to just get one to see what it tastes like. But this is, this is another, this is a new one. I haven't seen this one. So this is another option for a nice, big, meaty tomato. Okay, so now we're going to go down to my other group of favorite ones, and that is the purple tomatoes. So we have, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got seven varieties of purple tomatoes. So we have black from Tallulah, Tallula, and this one is an eight to 10 ouncer. And when I say the purple tomatoes, they have kind of like that mahogany purplish look to them, and they're kind of brownish a little bit. So, but when you cut them open, the color is just so rich and vibrant. They're very dark red. Then we have, of course, Cherokee Purple. That is a very favorite one. I get a lot of people asking for Cherokee Purple. That's this one. And Cherokee Purple is a 10 to 12 ounce. So that's a little bit bigger fruit. Then we have black, black, the black, the Japanese Black Trifle. And that one is actually, you can see it's got it. This one actually has a different type of leaf. They call it potato leaf. And they are related to potatoes. And um, this one is kind of pear-shaped. And it's uh, a five to eight ounce. And this one is also crack, resist, uh, crack resistant. And um, so that's another good one if you're, if you're having issues with them cracking and you don't like that. Then I have... Let's see, Paul Robeson, Robeson, sorry, Paul Robeson is a, where is he? I'm here somewhere. There he is. Also that, he's a 6 to 12 ounce, so he can get a little bit bigger, almost a pound. And this one's named after a famous actor, Paul Robinson, Robeson. And then we have the um, Black Prince. That one is a 5 ounce, so he's a little bit smaller. And he's pretty dark. He can get a pretty dark uh, look to him, almost black. And that's why they call him a black prince. And he, has, um, he is very juicy. And then we have Carbon, which is this guy. And this one is a, an award winner. It actually has, a, has won taste testing awards. And this one also is crack resistant. That one gives an 8 to 12 ounce fruit, so that's a pretty good size one. And then finally, I saved the best, the best for last because it's my favorite one, and that's the black crim. And black crim, if you've ever had one, you're going to know, oh yeah, that black crim is so good. It's very sweet. It's got a decent size to it. It can get a little bit of cracking, which I don't care. I just cut out the crack. And they can cat face. Now, cat face means that they get kind of that weird, you know, you've been in the store and you've seen those, those big tomatoes and they're all kind of oblong and weird and cracked all weird. Not cracked, but they're, they're wrinkled weird. Um, that's okay. Um, they eat just fine. I have no problems with that. But um, black crim, one of my favorites. I grow that one every year. Now, I might have to do that, that great white, though. That sounds very tempting. So then we also have the brandy wine combo. So we have the regular brandy wine, which is here. And this one's kind of pink. It's a pink flesh, and it's a good sized tomato. These, let's see, they, that one is one and a half pound they'll get. And again, the bigger the tomato, not as many as you get on the plant. Um, and these are all low acid. There's a red brandy wine. And even a red, this red one is, is low acid. So the brandy wines are pretty good for those of us. And this one, came, this one dates back to the 1800s. So our grandmas, 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 ate, <laughs> ate this one. Um, and then we have the yellow brandy wine, which like the other yellow ones is very low in acidity. acidity. And this one doesn't get quite as big. This is a, well, it does, I guess, a pound and a half. It can get to 12 to 24 ounces. And again, it's a sweet, mild flavor. Then we have the green zebra. Supposedly, I'm not a green tomato fan. 
Um, I know there's a lot of you out there, and the thing that pops into my head, the first thing that pops into my head is fried green tomatoes. Just loved it when that gal backed over that other lady. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, supposedly, this is supposed to taste like a red tomato. So it's green with green stripes. So I guess if you just kind of like that shock factor, um, kind of like a, a sweet lime. You, you, you're thinking that it's going to be sour and it gets sweet. Well, this is you're thinking it's going to be yucky and it's actually good. So this one will get, let's see, that one gets, where did I put my note here? Um, two to four ounces. So it's a little bit smaller. But, um, and it's supposed to have less seeds. So there you go, green zebra. For those of you who like green tomatoes. Then we're gonna go to the ones that are used more for um, sauces. And those are over here. Okay, so we have the Momotaro, and this is an eight ounce, this is a Japanese tomato, and it is also crack resistant. And then we have the San Marzano. Now I've seen the San Mar you've seen probably these in cans. I mean, they can these, they use these in sauces. They're very sweet. They're um, kind of like shaped like aroma. They're oblong. And um, they, let's see, they're two, about an inch and a half by four inches. They have less seeds in them. And th the thing about ro Roma's is that Roma is a determinant. Remember, to determinant means it's going to give you everything all at once. These are not, these are indeterminate and they will keep on going. So you don't have to plant a bunch of these if you want a nice big crop. So San Marzano and the Momotaro are good for that. And they are indeterminate varieties. Then, and that is that pretty much for our sauce ones, except for Roma, and I'll talk about that one in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the varieties that we seem to have all the time. They're the ones that the growers are constantly growing. Um, you can pretty much depend on them being here each week. And that we're going to start with the Ace Tomato. Ace Tomato has an 8 ounce, but this guy is also determinate. So this would be another one that maybe you wanted to, to have some salsa or something where you want it to all ripen at once and then you'll have a nice big crop that you can chop up and, and process those tomatoes all at one time. So that's an option for you there. And then we also have, for those of you who don't have big yards, we have the, where is he? Patio. And see, look how cute he is. He's so cute. He's just like this little squatty dude. He only gets about 24 inches or so. His tomatoes are about oh, golf ball size and they're on clusters, so it's kind of like a clustered grape tomato. Um, but this guy is also determinate, so he's going to give you everything at once. Now, a lot of times people will use these on those upside down hanging things um, because they don't get huge. And they'll give you tomatoes before it fills up with roots and then dies. So this is a good choice if you want to do that little hanging upside down bag thing. You can use the patio tomato or if you just want to... You might even be able to grow this in your kitchen on a bright windowsill and just pick it right off from the in your kitchen kind of thing. Maybe. Most of these want to be outside. I would say most of them want to be outside rather than... You, you would be experimenting. But still, I think that might be one if you really wanted to give it a try. Now, if it doesn't work, put it back outside again. It's going to be in a pot anyway. Okay, then we have are three celebrity champion and early girl and these guys are very hardy uh, early girl let me get let me get her here early girl where are you early girl she's late there she is early girl the good thing about early girl is she produces quick she's fast which is why they call her early girl and we also um, have her in the fall so that you can plant again in the fall and then she's going to go until it gets cold sometimes maybe on into it but she got she's got a nice um let's see her she's got a four ounce fruit which not too big but it's it's excellent for salads and you can start just eating i like to eat them like grapes so it's no big deal for me okay champion is another one this one these are also champion is also disease resistant and so is celebrity now champion is a six to eight ouncer and um, 
Celebrity is a 10 ouncer, but this one is, they call it semi determinant which means he'll give you a bunch of fruit and then he'll stall for a little while, then maybe grow out a little bit and then give you another bunch of fruit. Sometimes they don't go after that, but again, we also, we also um, have this one in the fall as a winter tomato. So that's another option for you in, in the fall. So then we also have the Better Boy, which is a 12 ounce tomato. So that's a little bit bigger. And these are all, like I said, these are disease resistant. So that's why we, they're, I guess, more common. Then we have the Sweet 100, which like the Sweet Million is going to give you a whole bunch of little red ones on grape clusters. And this again is, is a, uh, one of those more disease resistant plants. And we also have the yellow pear, which is a little, little yellow pear, which are really kind of fun as well. So we have those. And then I didn't bring them up here, but we also have the big beef, the big beef, we have big beef, which is a 10 ouncer. We have the beef master, which is a 16 ouncer, that's a pound. And we have the beef steak, which is also a 16. And then we have the lemon boy, which is your yellow one. So again, you guessed it, low in acid. And then we also carry the super steak, which is a 10 to 16 ouncer. So that pretty much in a nutshell is what we're carrying at least right now. Again, we're going to probably getting some other varieties that are not here as the season goes on. Um, like Big Rainbow, I've seen that one before. We didn't have any of those right now, but, but that, like I said, it, this is the time so just come on down our best stock is on Friday so if you come on a Monday we're gonna be picked over so try to get here on a Friday or a Thursday to get the best selection well if you've liked what you see please get click the like button hit the subscription button if you are not subscribed and if you are hit the bell if you want to know when we're gonna have more videos thank you for watching and have a great day